Hey everyone, welcome to episode 2 of the Crash Course and this episode we'll be going through our bug fix for our homework from last time and then moving on to navigation stuff so like navigation view and navigation link which will allow us to go from one screen to another and also show how to add navigation bars and customize navigation titles and things like that and then we'll show um, adding a sheet and also a tab view and last but not least a Z stack to make our views even cooler and let's get right into it um, so if you remember last time we created a list of users here that is just, just using a list of for each and a button and there's an alert on the button so when you press the user's name it says hi user so hi Mary but we introduced a bug last time which is that it always says hi Mary even if you press John or Cloud so the way we can solve this is by moving our alert to on to be on the list and that's because well it makes sense that we only want one alert that says hi at a time we don't need three of them and that way we can also add a state var here which is going to be selected user and that's going to be the name of the user we select so in our button we can just go selected user equals user and then here we can change high user to high selected user if we just run that we get hi mary and then if you press john we get hi john and hi cloud let me know if you guys got uh, any other solutions now that we've done our homework we'll get started with this episode so we'll go to our project here on the left side new file we'll make a new swift ui view and we'll just call it episode 2 and then xcode will open that up for us and we've got a fresh new view to work with so the first thing we'll be looking at today is navigation views and navigation links and basically these are related to just like the name suggests navigating between views and having um, ios take care of the transitions and things like that for us it used to be pretty difficult if you remember in UI kit, at least it was a lot of a lot more setup than Swift UI. But yeah, so what we can do is get rid of this text here and then we'll add a navigation view. And you can see it takes a content. So we'll just open that up. And what we'll do is just add a text here. And you can see it looks pretty much like exactly like what we had before. But what we can do now is add modifiers on the navigation view. Like, um, actually what we'll probably do is give this, put this inside of VStack. Most of the times your screens will be inside of VStack or a scroll view. Um, and what we can do is now on the VStack, we can have modifiers such as navigation title. And then we'll just call this our friends screen and you can see it's adding a title at the top there and it's using the large style but what we want is this one here navigation bar title display mode and we'll make this inline so that's the standard ios um navigation bar that we all know and love and yes yeah, so navigation view is basically a container for views that are going to be navigating and you'll see in a second um why that can be really powerful so what we can do is replace this um text here with a navigation link and what this does it provides a link from where you are and where you want to go so what we can do is give it a destination and for now we'll just have this be something like that a text that says screen 2 and a label and the label is basically what your the navigation link will display as your button to press to activate that link. And what we can do here is use a view that I've set up, which is similar. It's very close to the one we made last time. Oh, I just need to make this compile quickly. So we'll just make that empty text for now, um, which is similar to the view we made last time. It's just a, a H stack with an image and a V stack of the user's name and where they're from and yeah so we'll put use that as our button so what we'll do here is use a row we'll give us a name and where we're from so you can see that now it's displaying uh once it compiles really quickly it's displaying 
our row inside the navigation link. And you can press it and you can see that it takes you to, oh, oh. I don't know why my preview is being really slow today. Anyways, um, you can see that once you press it, it takes you to our screen too. And it also says the title of the back screen. So you can see that's really powerful. We already have native navigation working just in a couple of lines of code. And we can, we also have the native gesture of swiping back and stuff like that. Um, so it's looking good. What we probably want to do is just add some padding to our V stack to make it look even nicer. And we can add a spacer under our navigation link. And spaces are really powerful. It basically is just saying, take up all of this bottom space here and push the other items to the top. So we'll push the, our user row to the top and it looks better. And what we can also do is we can give our destination uh, a navigation title as well. So we'll say something like clouds profile. And now when we push, press a user, you can see the title updates here. So yeah, it's super powerful. And actually what is good to do is this is already getting a bit bloated to just be a parameter here. So we'll make a new struct and we'll call it something like, actually we should just call it user profile. So like that, and we'll just do that. And then we'll just do another V stack because V stacks are our friend. And we can put that there and move our title to this and we can create a user profile here. And what you could even do is pass in the name and then we can use that here. And then we'll just pass the name again. Cool. And then you can see now it's saying clouds profile. And if we change that here, it would be dynamic and it's all working good. Moving on, the next kind of navigation I'd like to show you guys is called sheets. And those are basically, they come from the bottom and up to the top and it's like an overlay. And we can swap our navigation link to a sheet pretty easily. Uh, we'll just get rid of this for now. And what we'll do now is have a button, which will have an action and a label. We'll define the action in a section and our label will just be our user row. So it looks the same so far. And our action, what we want to do, we'll make another state var for is sheet presented and we'll set that to false by default. And here we can just do is sheet presented dot toggle or you can set it to true. And then now on our V stack, we can have a sheet dot sheet. And you can see there's a couple of options here and the one we want is is presented which takes a binding of bool and here we'll just pass in is sheet presented and our content is going to be our user profile the name cloud oh, this needs to be a binding so you need a dollar sign and now you can see when you press that it brings up a sheet up here and you can see it's screen two and you can swipe it down like you would expect with um, I, native iOS sheets. And you can see now that we've lost our navigation title. And that's because this view is no longer inside our, the friends navigation view. Before when, you were, when we were using a navigation link, it, it was using um, the friends screens navigation view. So now if we want to have that again, what we'll need to do is put this inside a navigation view as well. And you can see here, we've got that back and then we can also make this small so that our title is back there. Another thing we can do is introduce a toolbar. So we can do dot toolbar and we'll make a toolbar item. Uh, where we can control the placement and we'll make it navigation 
and for content we just want to make a button that takes a string and an action and then so this will be our close button to dismiss the sheet and what we want to do for the action is have an environment variable for dismiss and we'll just call this dismiss and this is a key path to um, a dismiss action which yeah you can use to dismiss a sheet from within itself uh, so what we can do here is we can just call dismiss as a function and now when we open up our sheet you can see that we've got a done button and pressing it dismisses a sheet like you would expect cool so the next navigation related view we'll be talking about is the tab view and that's basically a container for your root level navigation and it has tabs at the bottom where you can tap and go to different screens in your app and it's the most common one used in um, apps and so what we'll do is we'll make a new view and we'll call this root view and then we'll replace our text here with a tab view and what it takes is a selection and some content so for a selection what we'll do is uh, we'll make a state var of our selected tab and we'll make this uh, a type of an enum so we'll go enum app tab let's we'll make this an int and what we'll do is friends and profile so these are going to be the tabs in our app for now and we can make the starting tab uh the starting tab our friends screen and then we can change the selection to selected tab it takes a binding and again i don't know why xcode doesn't <laughs> favor trailing closures um, what we can do here is use our episode 2 view um, so we'll do episode 2 and we can so what so now we have this view inside our tab view and you can see it's being rendered there and what tab view allows you to do is have modifiers on the views and what we can do is do dot tab item and it takes a label and this label will be basically uh what you want to display in the bottom in the tab and so what we want is a system image and we use person dot three and we'll give it text of friends and you see now it's saying we've got one tab it's got our icon and our label and what you also need to do with tab views is give it a tag. And this is basically gonna identify our view for us. And we'll make this tag the same as our enum. So we can go app tab dot friends. And this is gonna be used when switching tabs. So just to show that we can have multiple tabs, what we can do is just have a dummy view for now and we'll go profile screen and we can just copy this stuff here and just change it to profile and this can just be person and our uh, tag needs to now be profile so now if I go ahead you can see it's switching between the tabs and it's changing the selected item and our navigation is still working if you're curious about these dollar signs and these weird words like at state and binding and stuff don't worry we'll go through that in the next episode and it'll be a whole episode dedicated to swift ui uh swift ui property wrappers and um things like that so moving on uh i think the next thing will be a z stack and a z stack is not navigation related but it is very cool and we'll show that here in user row and so basically we've already seen haystack horizontal and vertical and z is basically the other direction it's the other dimension and it's for when you want to lay things on top of each other so i can demonstrate that by doing if we make this a z stack and we put our image inside it you can see nothing changes but now say we wanted to display the user's age so if we add a text here and you can see or not really 
at least. <laughs> ah, you can't move in uh, live mode. Yeah, so I'll change to that. Uh, you can see that the text is there. It's just kind of hard to see right now. So what we'll do is uh, we'll give this text a background and we'll make it a circle and we'll make the circle uh, green. So you can see that now we have a circle sitting on top of our profile picture uh, with text in it. And what we can do is if you look at Z stacks arguments, it takes an alignment. So, oops, we can give it a bottom trailing and that'll put it in the bottom right corner for us. And this text is probably a bit too big. So we'll just go font system and we'll change the size to something like 15 and we can give our view here a little bit of padding a circle and there you go so now you can see that the bottom the green circle with our age is sitting on top of the image and if we did that the other way around uh, you can see that now the profile picture is sitting on top of the um, age circle so Z stacks are really handy and they come you, you use them a lot when building more complex UIs uh, for things like this. Thanks for watching everyone. Um, if I missed anything or didn't explain anything thoroughly enough, please let me know and leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And there'll be a link to join my Discord in the description. And yeah, I'm building that as a community for programmers so we can have discussions and get help if you need. And yeah, please check it out. Thank you for watching.